I'm Dr. Bobby Lazare for Urology Times, and this is the Medical News Minute. Today we have Dr. Indy Gill, who's Chairman of the Department of Urology at USC. Dr. Gill, thank you so much for being with us today. My privilege. Let's talk about how robotics have changed the face of urologic oncologic surgery, and you were looking at some uh, specific, you had some specific questions. We were wanting to make, find out uh, how is robotic versus open surgery practiced? What is the penetrance in the field? What are the intraoperative outcomes? What are the perioperative outcomes and complications? What are the oncologic outcomes to the extent those data are available? Uh, what are the financial outcomes, the functional outcomes? The gold standard for any comparative work is the randomized control trial. There is a time in the evolution of a surgical technology for sure when a randomized control trial can be done. If that window is gone by, you cannot go back and do it because patients won't even sign up for it. So um, randomized control trials in surgical scenarios are just very difficult to do. And absent that, looking at the entire um, um, experience, entire data in the field, we felt could also give us some uh, pointers in this regard. So let's talk about um, some of the perioperative factors that you looked at. What were the outcomes between open and robotic? Open is faster for partial nephrectomy, radical prostatectomy, and radical cystectomy. How about blood transfusions? Blood loss, blood transfusions, lower in robotics across the board. How about length of stay? Hospital stay, readmission rates, et cetera, lower in robotics. Perioperative complication rates? Complication rates generally lower in robotic surgery as per the published literature. Surgical margins? Surgical margin status for prostatectomy was in favor of robotics. For radical cystectomy, there was no difference. Overall mortality? Overall mortality, cancer-specific mortality are again just, you need longer time period for those data points to be really solid and valid. So I would not feel comfortable saying one is better than the other, given that it's still early days in that regard. When you talk about the potential difference between the two, there wasn't anything that really stood out. Uh, I guess my question is, uh, were they fairly close in outcomes? They were fairly close in outcomes, but let me put it a different way. Okay. Robotics was no worse. Okay, robotics was no worse, okay. How about functional outcomes? Functional outcomes for prostatectomy as regards continence and potency were superior for robotic surgery. Give me an idea of what you found in terms of penetrance. That is one arena where the pendulum is clearly swinging and has swung in favor of robotic surgery. About 85% of all prostatectomies in the United States per the premier database are now robotic. 66% of partial nephrectomies are robotic. 33% of radical cystectomies are robotic now. 10 years ago, it was only 3%. So you can see a radical cystectomy is a advanced undertaking, especially when you're doing the extended lymph node dissection and doing intracorporeal urinary diversion, et cetera. So um, I'm actually surprised that 33% of cystectomies in the country are being done robotically, but I think this train has either left or is leaving the station. I, to me, the, that is just remarkable finding, how, how a new technology has so radically changed the way uh, urologic surgeons now approach their surgery. Exactly. In the aggregate, in 700 U.S. hospitals from the premier database, in 2005, about 35 or so percent surgeries were robotic. Today, that number is 70 percent. What is currently the standard of care? Is it open or is it robotic? Or is it a combination of both? If you were to rephrase the question a different way, which is at centers of expertise, where advanced expertise is available, uh, the robotic pendulum has swung over considerably. Where are we gonna be in 2050? Do you think that open surgery is going to become obsolete? Uh, this is a, a, a question that's gonna get me into an answer to which is gonna get me into it's a lot of trouble. It is completely <laughs> hypothetical. Okay, but, but I, I think things are gonna change dramatically, obviously. Um, with earlier diagnoses, 
when tumors are uh, uh, caught when they are smaller, mm -hmm. with use of genomics and um, patient-specific risk stratification to figure out which of the tumors should be handled with just active surveillance right. and which ought to be uh, subjected to surgical treatment. Uh, I think robotics is going to significantly um, increase in utilization. So I think that uh, uh, a combination of image-guided therapies mm -hmm. uh, for the smaller, uh, more uh, innocuous cancers or tumors to uh, robotic surgery for those that are bigger and little require more aggressive treatment to open surgery for things that have really uh, increased in size significantly, et cetera, et cetera, all combined with genomic analysis, uh, independent individual risk stratification and targeted therapies, et cetera, et cetera, it's gonna be a different world. And I don't even think it's 2050, it's gonna be much sooner. Mm -hmm.